working on here on Action News at 6. Thank you, Stephen. Why would the state protect some of the most dangerous drivers among us? People who steer 40,000 pound city buses? I'm Chief Investigative Reporter Steve Wilson with a story you need to see before you ever again get near a Detroit City bus. And everyone is talking about these streaks of colors lightening up the skies over the Strange as it may sound, is Michigan state law actually protecting some of the most dangerous drivers on our streets and highways? Our chief investigative reporter, Steve Wilson, joins us tonight with some disturbing evidence that shows that may well be the case. Which law are we talking about, Steve? Well, good evening, Diane. It's the Michigan Vehicle Code, a section that was enacted 55 years ago. And apparently, until now, nobody has ever questioned how instead of protecting us, it may actually be providing cover for some of the most dangerous drivers on the road. Beautiful. Stephen Grenier knows about dangerous drivers. An avid bicyclist most of his life, he was riding his bike home from work safely and lawfully on Gratiot Street in downtown Detroit when suddenly a 40,000-pound city bus literally ran him over. Bus approaches the rear, pulls to the right to a bus stop. Right, it's headed, it's headed for a bus stop, but just runs him down right in the street like a dog in the street just runs right over him. He winds up under the wheel gets spit out from the bus, and winds up on the pavement on his... I wonder if I was going to live or die. No. So if you get run over by a bus, you uh, know it it's, could be the end of your life. Grenier was no stranger to riding a bike, even in city traffic, legally and cautiously. He'd done so without incident for 30 years until that. I re remember the horn. I had to uh, move over as far as I could, but before I could, uh, the, bike, the bus was swiped in the side of my bike, and I went flying, and the back wheels went over my pelvis area. It crushed me, uh, and as I say, it's a miracle I'm alive. As you might imagine, with Grenier expected to be unable to ever return to his job that helped support his family, and disabled for life, there was a lawsuit. And that's when attorney Scott Goodwin stumbled upon how the record of drivers like the one who struck his client are routinely covered up and frequently protected from public view by state law. The first thing Goodwin did was ask the state to give him details of what is known about the bus driver's history on the road. Now, we order the driving record. I get this driving record, and it's a clean sheet of paper. Here's the sheet you got back. It's completely clean, and, and, and it says what? It says there's no driving activity for the last seven years, which means she's had no traffic tickets. It absolutely says it's an all clear. But guess what? The people at Michigan's Secretary of State's Bureau of Driver Records knew much more about that bus driver's history than they ever revealed to attorney Scott Goodwin, or even to city officials who put her on the road every day, steering what can be 20 tons of trouble in your direction. When Goodwin got a look at a real record, the full picture, unedited by state record keepers. That one sheet of paper that said there was no history turns into two sheets of paper. Is this the document we're talking this about? This is the absolute document from the Bureau of Driver and Vehicle Records uh, from the Secret Michigan Department of Secretary of State. Now compare for yourself the clean record the state releases on the left and on the right, evidence of accident after accident after accident, virtually all of them with city buses on city streets. In just three years... I count 17 different accidents on that sheet. 17 different accidents on this sheet. That is correct. And back in Lansing now, the director of the State Driver Records Bureau freely admits nobody's supposed to see the real picture we've just shown you. So it's supposed to still be a secret. That's correct. And here's why. When they released the driver's edited record that said no driving activity for the last seven years, it also said, parenthetically, prepared in compliance with MCL 257.733. Now, that's the state law enacted way back in 1949 that says the Secretary of State shall not release information relating to an accident on the record of a driver to a non-governmental agency unless the driver was subsequently convicted of or determined to be responsible for a violation in connection with the accident. Seventeen times she's involved in accidents, including some injuries, and in every occasion we're to believe that she was not at fault? People just keep running into her? That's what she wants everybody to believe. It appears from these police reports, and I know in my particular case, there was no ticket issued at all. And now, now that we've done some digging, turns out attorney Scott Goodwin never knew the half of it. 
Since she was hired by the city in July of 1999, bus driver Melvia Owens there was involved in not 17, but we've now confirmed at least 39 separate accidents resulting in at least four other injuries before she collided and crippled the bicyclist. Jonathan Reed is another one of her victims. I'm disabled permanently as a carpenter. He was just sitting here at this intersection waiting for the light to change when Melvia Owens' bus slammed into him from the rear going maybe 35 to 45 miles an hour. The seat belt broke, the seat broke in half. Then, he says, his head hit something causing permanent injury and leaving him able to work now only at McDonald's. Welcome to McDonald's. Can I take your order? And although the law requires all injury accidents to be reported to the state, Melvia Owens, Rear Ender, and others were not. And in all those accidents, Detroit police never once found her at fault, despite the fact we now learn Jonathan Reed collected a settlement of 52,500 city taxpayer dollars and was told to keep his mouth shut about it. Did they admit any guilt? No, not really. They just wrote you a check and you went away. Another Owens victim collected a similar amount and how much more taxpayer money to settle Stephen Grenier's case? $1.4 million on behalf of Stephen Grenier. So we're at a million and a half dollars? A million and a half dollars have been paid out on behalf of the city of Detroit taxpayers that could have went to school books, that could have went to lighting, that could have went to street improvements, that could have went to crime prevention. And yet here we are, 2004, Melvia Owens still behind the wheel of city buses, still driving on down the road. As far as I know, she's still driving on down the road, causing carnage. Oh, yeah. There she goes on the 16 Dexter route early last Friday morning. The truth is that after Stephen Grenier wound up under the wheels of her bus, the city has allowed her to keep right on driving despite at least eight more accidents. And get this, for months, city officials have sent her driving on the streets with an invalid license they never even discovered until after we inquired about her. It's a shameful and costly record of at least 47 accidents in just about 52 months. Overall, on average, that's a crash about every 4.7 weeks. A sorry score by any standard. I have a few questions about your driving record. How many accidents have you had? It's nothing she wants to talk about. Get off my phone. Sorry? Ma'am, ma this is a public bus. This isn't your private vehicle, and I don't intend to get off. That's what I said to her just before she knocked me to the ground, jumped into another car, and sped off back to the bus garage. Well, Friday, she and another driver were suspended without pay, pending a hearing that's coming up in just two weeks. You know, this may be just the most unbelievable story I've ever reported anywhere, anytime. I mean, how can this be? A state law that hides such dreadful driving? And get this, for firemen, policemen, and ambulance drivers throughout the state of Michigan, even when they crash on the job and are found at fault and get a ticket, the same law provides for covering up even that from public view. Now remember, the city was keeping track of all these crashes, but doing nothing because she wasn't getting tickets, and they kept finding her faultless in each and every one of these crashes. Now they admit they've been asleep at the wheel for years, and it's time for a new policy, they say. But how many others, and what are they going to do to make the rest of us safer on the bus and on the street? If you're shocked at what you saw tonight, just wait till tomorrow night. This story only gets worse or, or better if you look at it that way. It's just incredible. We have to wonder how many other drivers are out there with similar or worse records. Well, we've got the list today, and we're going to start looking. And they Excellent. say they're also going to be looking, so we'll be back with that answer, hopefully, by the end of the week. There's a service for the community. Tomorrow, tomorrow at 6, part 2, and right. then later in the week. Thank you very much, Steve. And let's uh, talk to uh, Jerry right now about what's going on in the weather out there. Well, the weather's cold and getting colder. So the Detroit tonight. Department of Transportation are reviewing the driving records of every city bus driver. It's all because of an Action News investigation that began here last night. At least two drivers have already been suspended in advance of expected termination. And Chief Investigative Reporter Steve Wilson has more details tonight. The Detroit Department of Transportation doesn't deny that what we've discovered is a dangerous and shameful situation for which there is simply no excuse. Not even from the new DOT chief appointed by Mayor Kilpatrick earlier this year. Well, let me just say this. Um, pretty much as seven months ago as directorship, I became more involved in this situation. And I'm as appalled, of it, uh, appalled with this as you are. I mean, it's just straight out ridiculous. As we first reported Monday, one of his city bus drivers, that woman there, Melvia Owens, has racked up at least 47 accidents in just five years on the job. Jonathan Reed is one of those statistics. 
He was just sitting in a traffic light when he says one of these 20-ton city buses with Melvia Owens at the wheel rear-ended him so hard his seatbelt broke. Injuries forced him to drop out of carpenter school and forever snuffed out his plans to build himself a good future as a tradesman. City records confirm Owens was at the wheel for 23 crashes before she ran into Jonathan Reed. But she stayed on the road because somehow Detroit police never gave her a ticket. Not for the rear ender, nor for any of the nearly two dozen others before that. Then she went on to crash four more times before she nearly killed Stephen Grenier. He was riding his bike down Gratiot Avenue safely and lawfully when suddenly Owens drove her bus into him and he ended up under the back wheels. It left him disabled, too, but lucky to have survived at all. Yeah, I feel I was a miracle of God. Yeah, that's all I can say, that it's uh, his gift that I'm still alive. Again, Melvia Owens got no ticket. And even though city DOT officials knew she was crashing almost like clockwork, since her wrecks were all declared to be unavoidable, she kept on driving, steering city buses into accident after accident after accident and never a ticket. My assumption is... For whatever reason, the city of Detroit bus drivers or the city of Detroit employees are not getting tickets. Why not? Because maybe it opens them to liability. She drove all this year? Yes. On a suspended license? I agree. That's right. Since last December and until five weeks ago, Melvia Owens has been driving city buses and her personal car on a suspended driver's license. A state computer did what city bus officials did not. It saw dozens of accidents, flagged her as a potentially unsafe driver, and ordered her into an office like this one for retesting. When she failed to respond, her license was suspended until she finally did show up nine months later, passed the written test and a road test, and got her license back. At the DOT, it was all a secret until our investigation prompted somebody to actually check. Once we found out about it, and actually, um, um, based on what I um, found out that you were investigating it, we ran our check and a broken system. We found out um, the same things you found out. You see, even though they keep accident records like these we've obtained, who is checking the official state driver records that would show driving problems, a suspension, or revocation? We need an exhaustive check on every driver's once a quarter. And we has, got has there ever been such a check to your knowledge? I, certainly I can. Not to my knowledge, no. And even while Detroit cops, for some strange reason, have never, ever found Melvia Owens at fault in any of her nearly four dozen accidents. Do you know how much Melvia Owens has cost the taxpayers well, in the city of Detroit? No, I don't. Only thing I know is the last one, I think it was $2.9 million associated with the last major accident. Jonathan Reed collected $52,500. A similar amount went to another injured party, while Melvia Owens was allowed to keep on driving even after nearly killing Stephen Gradier. Two years ago or more, and she's still behind the wheel? I understand that. I agree with you. I'm angered by that as well. But understand, the safety board... Not nearly really as well, angry as that man on the bicycle. Oh, no doubt. Imagine I, what happened I, to him. I, and I understand. And didn't you at least owe him the duty and responsibility after she did to him what the city apparently acknowledges with its settlement that she did to get this woman off the road and not let her drive two more years? Hello? Oh, I, I understand what you're saying, but keep in mind now, seven months I've got to pretty much turn an, an overwhelming number of issues around quickly. That's what I have to do. I'm at a loss. I really totally am at a loss that a person can have those many accidents. If you hurt somebody, you should have some uh, accountability. And since our investigation began, lo and behold, the city has now identified Melvia Owens' roommate and former fiance, Daryl Edmonds, as almost as dangerous behind the wheel. Here's his DDOT record that shows 32 bus accidents that resulted in three injuries. And here's his state driver record from Lansing. Among what's noted here, 16 license suspensions. As soon as we learn this, we've automatically in initialized a um, check of all drivers. No this kidding. is something we got to get to the bottom of. A light bulb finally went off and somebody said, hey, we ought to check and see well, if these guys have a record like this. There's no doubt about it. I mean, you bring this to atten our attention, is, you know, I, I admit to you, as certainly. And, you know, I, and I don't, as I say, I don't mean to sit here and beat you over the head with it, but my gosh, it's like, it's the most appalling thing I've ever seen. Well, I, I think... Would you, you agree? Oh, no doubt. There's nothing else I can do. It is ridiculous, but certainly I can tell you one thing. 
that these two individuals, based on their record, would never drive a bus in the city of Detroit again. Darrell Edmonds has refused comment, and at the end of her route last Friday, Melvia Owens also refused to speak before she pushed me, and in a heavy rain, I slipped and fell to the ground. Are you proud of this? Excuse me! You knocked me to the ground! Bus drivers now suspended without pay, and they are entitled to a hearing that's scheduled for Friday of next week. Meanwhile, DDOT Director Norman White says he's checking the record of every other city bus driver. And I'll be at his office again Friday for an update to learn how many others like this are behind the wheel of Detroit city buses. Steve Wilson, Action News. Channel